Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, this one, I want to crack on it and start work on this HW90 which Bob very kindly sent it over to me. Uh, I have pre-started on it. Um, I've basically got it down to its component parts to see what's missing. There are a few little bits and bobs missing which I'm going to need to replace. Uh, how easy I'm able to source those pieces I have no idea but I'll get there uh, by hook or crook. Um, I, I do have access to a machinist's lathe so if I need to make any specialty bits for it I'm sure I can uh, do so, should we say. What I have done so far I have no idea what the finish was, not the original finish because this was highly blued, I can see that. Uh, but the uh, finish what was placed on top of this blue and whether it is enamel paint, hammerite, some sort of uh, dodgy cerico, I, I have no idea but where, where I've gone with the metal work so far is I have stripped the barrel back to bare metal uh, started doing the same on like the breech block that, that's going to take a little bit of work to get that back to bare metal it is very rough at the moment this is literally stuck on a, a, a bronze copper wire wheel as such and use that to work off all the old finish. Now, doing that is going to leave scratches on here, very light, but scratches nevertheless. For me to get a good finish on this rifle barrel and indeed the cylinder, it, it will be uh, taken back to a very, very high grit, wet and dry, probably up to 2000 grit. I want I, my idea is literally to get this barrel, the suppressor, and the cylinder uh, back to a high mirror finish with no scratches on there whatsoever. And then I'm going to make the decision whether I re blue this or cerakote it. Um, jury's still out on which way I go. I understand that if I re blue this, it can. It can go, not very nice should we say, it can go patchy, it can wear off very easily. However, I know, I kind of know what I'm doing and I promise you guys uh, my results will be pretty damn good whichever uh, route I go, whether it's the Cerico or the blue in. Uh, so I think I mentioned this before guys, I'm, I'm very used to restoring uh, tools and guns and all sorts of stuff, I kind of know where I'm going. Like I say, for this to get professionally reblued, it's just cost prohibitive, so I'm not even going to go down there. I will make a decision as I go along. So I'll just pop that in the barrel out of the way. Where I'm going to go today is I want to crack on and get this stock done. Now this is something I'm very very capable of doing. I'm going to get now I know some guys when they do stock refinishes and stuff like that they only take it up to like maybe uh, maybe maximum 240 grit. However uh, I've restored enough gun stocks and indeed made enough gun stocks to know that for me um, I like taking it up to at least 1000 grit it, I've heard it said the finish doesn't penetrate very well on a gun stock if you take it at too high grit you need to leave like uh, the pores of the wood to open to absorb the finish uh, like the stain and uh, I can see the theory behind it, but once again theory and practice don't always marry up, do they? Uh, I know from restoring lots of gun stocks that if I get a nice 
smooth finish on this, literally butterly smooth to touch. Uh, I can wipe the finish on stock and it'll go on just fine. Um, got to remember once the finish is on, it's and when I say the finish, once the stain is on, it's what goes on top of that which holds like the stain into the wood. Um, I haven't quite decided the how I'm going to uh, do the final finish on it, whether it's going to be some sort of poly varnish, um, I'm not sure yet. It might be, I'd take this back to like a uh, nice smooth wood, put something on like Danish oil, something like that, um, and then do almost like a waxed finish on top of that. We will see. However, this is my biggest issue at the moment. There, whoever had this before attempted to put stippling on the pistol grip here and they've gone quite deep into here. Uh, I'm going to have to get rid of this and take it back to bare wood so that's what I'll do. Get this back to spare, uh, literally bare wood and then what we'll do from there is I probably won't put checkering on there. I have got all the tools to touch, recut checkering in here. But now I think I'm going to keep the rifle stock smooth. So basically, what you need to get rid of this that's my first point of call a Shinto rasp. Take this back and level out the wood, and then it's lots and lots of sand. And I'm not going to show you guys that because it would bore you to tears me with a piece of sandpaper and all the Shinto rasp in my hand, and it's just rubbing it backwards and forwards, getting a nice smooth finish on it all. And this will take me this isn't a like a five minute job, this is going to take absolutely hours to get this back to looking good. What I'll do is I'll crack on, I'll get it done and I'll turn the camera off once I've got rid of all this stippling here. Cheers guys! Right guys, I've now rubbed this stock down. Uh, if you ever do a stock makeover, rebuild, call it what you want, bit of advice for you. Uh, never use a random orbital sander. Now, uh, where I've been rubbing this down, uh, I don't think this camera's going to pick it up. It might do if I put some white spirit on this stock. Uh, it might pick it up because this has been someone has attacked this with a random orbital sander. You've got like these little pigtails, which almost like squarely marks what go across there. Now they're very hard to see through the naked eye uh, on bare wood, as such. If I now attempted to put any sort of finish on this stock those little pigtails would uh, stand out like uh, the proverbial dogs so yeah don't if you're doing a stock it's sort of uh, quite hard work but don't use random orbital sanders uh, because it will create so much heartache like I say, if I hadn't noticed those and had cracked on and tried to put a finish on this stock, this would be almost, well it looks almost like a curly snake going around here where the orbital sanders got on there. Unfortunately, there are no shortcuts if you want to do a proper job. You, you've got, uh, it's all hand sand. And, uh, yeah, I'm seeing quite a few pigtails all over this stock. Um, I'll wipe it down with some white spirit and then I'll show you a bit better close up. But like everything in life, whether it's shooting or 
fishing, restoring stuff. Um, there are no shortcuts. If you want to do a proper job, you, you have to put the time and effort in. Uh, yeah, I think you'll probably see, might pick up the pigtails here. But I'm going to wipe this down with white spirit and I'll highlight the areas where a pencil where I need to work on hand sanding and we'll crack on and get it done. Cheers guys. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Right, update on this HW90 where we've got to so far. Uh, I didn't believe for one moment you guys wanted to see footage of me sanding down uh, this rifle stock. However, that is what has happened. If you remember uh, when I received this um, gun, it had deep stippling in there, what looked like it had been put there with a punch or something. It was very, very deep inside the pistol grip, so it's taken quite a lot of sand in to get it nice and smooth and get rid of all the marks. I've now rubbed down the stock as far as I want to take it. I've, it's just a case of getting strips of cloth backed sandpaper going up through the grits and running it backwards and forwards uh, and smoothing it all out. The stock is buttery smooth and I've wiped it down. So where am I going to go with this? I've mixed up lotions and potions and it's literally a matter of applying like this finish on. Always a nerve wracking moment because it's always a case of have you got the right colouring and it, it'll be a case of applying, applying this on quite thickly let it soak in and then wiping it down getting rid of any like brush marks on it so that's just show you guys what I'm doing and basically I'm just going to crack on and apply all this uh, stay. If you're interested what this mixture is it's a two part mixture it's a walnut and rosewood mixture but with the emphasis on the walnut rather than the rosewood and it, it will give it a nice Instead of like the really dark of the walnut, it will give it a, it'll give it a, hopefully when I stride, it'll give it a slight red, um, redness to the dark walnut. So with that, guys, so you can see what I'm doing. It's just a matter of applying this, getting it on, put it on fairly thick, and then I'll wipe it off, and it should even out all the brush marks. Uh, in regards to the metal work, my apologies on that, I have stripped down the cylinder and I have stripped the barrel of all the old enamel finish and it, I'll do a video on how I go about polishing all that up so it really, for me to apply a decent finish on because I've decided I'm not going to Cerakote it. Uh, it really needs to be like almost a mirror finish on it. I'm going to crack on, get this done, turn the camera off and I'll show you the end result in a second or two. Right guys, that's the first coat on. What will happen now is, is this I'll leave this for a good 24 hours to dry, probably longer than that. And then I'll apply a second coat and a third coat of this. It's not, you don't need to, but uh, what will happen now is if I just put um, a finish on top of this once it's dried, as this dries it will get very very pale um, and we want, 
why I put three coats on is it's almost like building up the layers. This first coat, though it may sound wasteful, I'll literally go over this now with quadruple or uh, steel wool and basically denib this. Once the woods, like the raised wood uh, fibres, like the nibs are raised, I'll take them off, smooth it out again, and reply another coat, and then another coat. And in my experience, three coats of this stuff, and it'll be tickety b. And then we'll go on to uh, put in whatever finish I decide to do on the rifle stock. But as you can see, it's darkened up the stock considerably. Uh, not too concerned about it looking a bit blotchy at the moment as uh, like around here this piece you'll find as I add more coats on it and take take this back not to bare wood but certainly denib it with the steel wool it'll start evening out all the colour but that's just a quick update on where we are with this uh, HW90 I am in the process of doing it so Thanks for your continued support guys and follow me along until we get this uh, bad boy completely and utterly finished. Cheers guys.